QuickBooks Self-Employed Guide, accounting and financial reporting software for freelancers and independent contractors. Watch this video to get a simple but detailed step-by-step -step on how to use QuickBooks Self-Employed to boost your freelancer business. Keep in mind the information in this guide is also applicable to other major freelancer accounting manuals available in the market as they all cover the same key topics of mileage tracking, expense monitoring, receipt sorting and tracking, billing, and tax estimation and filing. Watch now. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as terrific as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about QuickBooks Self-Employed. This is one of the top accounting software programs for freelancers and, and, and um, independent contractors out there. Let's get into the nitty gritty here. First part, you want to track with QuickBooks Self-Employed, you can track mileage automatically. So you can see that you can you have uh, you have accurate reporting at the end of the year. You can track miles without draining your phone's battery. That's pretty important. And mileage data is saved and categorized to, ma to maximize deductions. And that's very important because if you are always on the go, you want to maximize deductions and you want to deduct, you want to write off every single mile that you put out there for the clients or for work in general. Now let's take a little deeper into a uh, mileage tracker. QuickBooks, as you can see on the screen right now, QuickBooks has um, a mileage tracker feature that is great. That's fantastic. So whether you are driving part-time, full-time, or occasionally making uh, deliveries, mileage can be one of the largest tax deductions for a small business. So you want to drive up those mileage, mileage deductions. Let's get into the nitty gritty here. With QuickBooks self-employed, you have automatic GPS tracking. So this is easier than doing nothing. Just drive and uh, QuickBooks will use your phone's location to detect when you are driving. Or you can add a trip manually. You can also swap left for business miles. So as you can see on the screen, easily categorize individual trips as business or personal to accurately track up potential tax deductions. Another advantage here is you get detailed mileage reports where you can see the breakdown of miles and potential deductions plus it's very easy to share when you need to so you have something like total miles you can see total miles driven total miles total business miles and you can have business usage so you have a percentage of the total miles driven versus the total business miles and that gives you a proportion of the total tax deduction that you are entitled to you can also bring your miles with you. So as your as your business grows, you can automatically transfer your current mileage from QuickBooks Self-Employed to a QuickBooks Online. That's the beauty of it. So you, you are taking advantage of the cloud capabilities of QuickBooks Self-Employed and you're able to have your data reportable and uh, transportable anywhere you go. One thing that you have to pay attention to when it comes to um, QuickBooks mileage tracker, and this is an important element, is that you have to find a way to make sure that you comply with it, with IRS guidelines while also making sure that you are um, you are paying attention to QuickBooks self-employed terms of service. Now, talking about terms of service, let's let's just clarify a few things here. How do you add a manual trip? So adding a manual trip is easy and you can do it right from your phone. So all you have to do is to tap mileage from the menu, then tap the plus icon to add to create a new entry. You can enter your trip information, date, total mileage and trip purpose, because that's what's going to tell the system how to classify, how to categorize rather, how to categorize the, the trips at the end of the year whether the trip is business trip or just, uh, you know, a personal trip. And once you do that, select save and you're all set. Can you export and send it to your accountant? Of course you can. You can easily share tax details like mileage through the mileage report. It lists your self-assigned taxable business profit and total amount for each Schedule C deduction category. Which product includes mileage tracking? 
so you can track miles in QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Self-Employed. So you have the data that is uh, replicable on um, two platforms, QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Self-Employed. And how do you transfer mileage from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Online? Very easy. Again, um, the, the folks, the engineers at QuickBooks Self-Employed have made it very easy. So as your business grows, as your business grows rather, QuickBooks Online may be the right option for you if you think about it. The good news is that you can automatically transfer your current mileage from QuickBooks Self-Employed to QuickBooks Online. After you're signing and switch planes, you can select your, an option to bring your data over. So you'll find your miles waiting for you in your new account. So everything is uh, is just a transferred ASAP into your into your new um, into your new QuickBooks. Now let's talk about the rates. You want to keep up with standard mileage rates because every year the IRS publishes the standard mileage rates for calculating mileage deductions. So for 2020, for instance, the rate is 57.5 cents per business mile. So all you have to do, you just have to multiply the total business miles you drove last year by the standard mileage rate. Then claim that number on your tax return as your business mileage tax deduction. So the previous, uh, we're just putting right now on the screen, the previous standard mileage rates, you can compare rates that the IRS published over the last few years. So in 2019, it was 58 cents. 2000, 2018, it was 54.5 cents. 2017, it was 53.5 cents. In 2016, it was 54 cents, right? And we're also talking about, and we're also talking about something else that's very important to a lot of people. That's the deduction. So how to calculate your mileage deductions. There are two ways to calculate your business mileage deductions, the standard mileage method and the actual expense method. So you will not be able to take both deductions. So you got to choose the method that best fits your work. So standard mileage the method in uh, 2020, you, you had to, so if you want to calculate the standard mileage deduction, you have to use the standard mileage method to calculate the amount of business mileage you can claim on your tax return. All you have to do just to multiply your total business miles for the year by the standard mileage rate. Another important thing, another important element in um, QuickBooks Self-Employed is the mileage tracker. So you can track mileage to get the biggest tax deduction you deserve. Now think of the mileage tracking app as an, a hands-free digital mileage log. So what are mileage logs? A mileage log is a written record of your trip that you submit with your business mileage deductions. So the IRS requires that you keep your mileage logs for three years, whether a paper and pencil mileage log you keep in your glove box or a digital mileage log stored on your phone. And the beauty of this is that when you have QuickBooks self-employed, you can actually start tracking mileage, your mileage ASAP. The QuickBooks mobile app acts as a digital mileage log by tracking and categorizing the miles you drive for work. So you can use the mileage tracker app like QuickBooks Online to ensure that your business mileage is recorded in real time and organized so that it's not a lot, it's not lost or forgotten when you need it. Folks, that's very important because at the, during tax time, that's when, what, that's when you really need the, uh, the uh the information it's there it's in the cloud it's saved somewhere in the cloud and you just have to log into your quickbooks online account and get it because at that time at, at tax time you have all the details necessary to claim your mileage deduction another thing that's also very important here is that you have to understand what is mileage tracking when we're talking about mileage tracking let's talk a little bit about mileage tracking what is it exactly mileage tracking refers to keeping a log of miles driven for a tax deduction or reimbursement purposes. So for, for 2019, for example, you can claim it an, a 58 cent deduction per business mile. That means every mile driven to meet clients, run business errands, or grab work supplies will add up to the, to, to the one thing, cash either deducted from your taxes or reimbursed after you file. So ride share drivers, photographers, Etsy shop owners, anyone who is self-employed or runs a small business, we're talking to you here. I'm talking to you right now. So here is, here is a, a few, let's just say like a, a few, a small rundown, if you will, of everything you need to know about tracking business and personal mileage for your taxes. What counts as business as deductible mileage? 
you want to determine what qualifies for it. So the IRS has uh, strict rules about what counts and what doesn't. For example, traveling between offices and work sites, driving to, driving to meet a client for drinks, or heading to the store for business re related supply counts. But commuting anywhere from home doesn't, even if you're taking a business call in the car or going into the office to meet, to meet a client. How do you track that? I've already said it. You can track it through a normal paper, paper, pencil and paper format, or you can use a mobile app. And QuickBooks has the, the best mobile app for you at this very moment. So one thing you also want to pay attention to is that um, you can track mileage for medical, moving and charity. Now, this is for people who are self-employed, who have access to the highest education rate and fewer restrictions. But I'll cover that in, in another show. Let's move now, or before I even move on to the next uh, next uh, level here, let me take a quick break and I'll be right back right after this. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back folks to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're also having a conversation here around um, QuickBooks Self-Employed. I'm giving you a guide in, in simple terms and in, in simple English so you, you can, uh, we can uh, you can implement today and start tracking your mileage, tracking your expenses and expand your small business because that's the bottom line really if you think about it. Now, I first spoke to you about tracking mileages. Now let's talk about sorting expenses. With QuickBooks Self-Employed, you can sort expenses. Remember, this is a an accounting and report and financial reporting software program. So it has myriad facility, myriad features to help you track your expenses so you can easily easily sort and track expenses so you can keep tabs on your finances right from your phone you can import expenses directly from your bank account you can sort business from personal spending with a swipe so by doing this you are able to track in fine all expenses in one place and save time on taxes this is the beauty of um, of uh, quickbooks self-employed now let's dig a little further into what I mean really by uh, expense tracking here. You can connect your account. So you basically can automatically import transactions from your bank, credit cards, PayPal, software, and more. You can easily sort transactions. So expenses are sorted into tax categories. That way, come tax time, things go faster. So you can accept or edit them and um, the system uses artificial intelligence to learn from you over time. You can even create custom rules once you are in, um, once you have a QuickBooks self-employed, because at the end of the day, you are in the driver's seat. You create rules for how you want the software to categorize expenses. By doing that, if you do it the right way, you can be ready for tax time, right? So you can effortlessly organize your receipt. And that's very important. We've seen this across the country where when you know you in January or February, and people are receiving the 1099 or the 10 um, 1099 or 1040, and all this sort of uh, tax paperwork, and you have some kind of frenzy. But if you have the right software, and again, this is not we just took an example talking about QuickBooks self employed here. But if you have all the top accounting software out there, the accounting software providers out there, they all have the they all have similar features. So. You can effortlessly organize receipts. You can snap and save photos of receipts and the system, the QuickBooks system will automatically match them to your expenses. You can even uncover every tax deduction. So you keep things organized in one place, folks, in one place. So you never miss a deduction. You can also use the, the software program to access and share built in expense reports. Think about that. Isn't that beautiful? So you can keep tabs on your finances. You can make smarter decisions with instant access to key financials, including what income, expenses, outstanding invoices, and more. If you are a freelancer, that's key information. If you are an, an independent contractor, that's key information. You, you need to have an idea of where your business is going at every moment. You can gain, you can gain valuable insights also by instantly seeing how you're doing with profit and loss reports. Profit and loss is the same thing as income statement, or it's sometimes it's also called a statement of income. So you can share this data, the profit and loss data with your accountant. So you get a better picture of your self-employed work. 
that's the bottom line here now let's dig a little further in terms of expense tracking so expense tracking why track self-employed business expenses so by tracking how each dollar is spent you can see how you're doing year year around and you can make sure you don't leave money on the table at tax time so you can take business with you on any device so you can easily track expenses from your mobile phone with a quick boost self-employed app you can connect your bank account credit card square or others to automatically import categorize and track expenses isn't that beautiful another thing you need to do you can really easily do is to review your spending habits you can keep an eye on expenses by clients or job you can track ongoing deductions and more across all of your devices that's that's wonderful at the end of the day because you're able to have a one an overview of your financial situation at at any moment at any moment you can also quickbooks self-employed also makes it easy to get reimbursed remember as a as a freelancer as an independent contractor some expenses have to be reimbursed by the clients but how do you prove it how do you substantiate those expenses so if you have expenses for clients that can be reimbursed down the road such as supply cost or rental equipment no problem the software got you covered because it makes it simple to track reimbursable expenses and add receipts to invoices you can also put tax worries behind you with the uh, with uh, quickbooks self-employed the system allows you for example and i think i already spoke about I already spoke about that because expenses are auto sorted and auto auto aligned into tax categories year around it makes it easier for you to file to file those uh, expenses for deductions at tax time plus you can stay on top of quarterly taxes with due date reminders and automatic estimate of what you owe so for you you don't have to do anything everything is done for you by the system and all you have to do just to remember to push the right button another thing that we need to talk about is receipt tracking for self-employed expenses receipt tracking if you are like me a freelancer or or independent contractor you know exactly what I'm talking about because the importance of keeping receipts stored and accessible cannot be overstated at the end of the year let's say December 31st or January when everybody's getting ready is getting busy for their um, to file their taxes having an organized record of receipts already matched to your transactions makes tax time a lot easier the internal revenue services the internal revenue service rather requires you to keep receipts used for any claim for up to six years six years folks now are you going to have are you going to keep that paperwork that are you going to keep it digitally or in paper like you know six years stuff happens you move around you have a fire or you forget it it's better to keep everything online on the cloud so Anyone who has receipts that are even a few months old will tell you that the ink fades pretty fast, which is why, again, you want to put things online. Plus, what happens if your wallet takes a swim or there is an accident or natural disaster? I just spoke about that a fire that makes your physical files unreadable. So with a receipt tracking app like QuickBooks Self-Employed, it's very easy to address these issues. You can use your phone to snap a photo of your paper receipts and QuickBooks self-employed will automatically instantly folks that's the thing instantly match them to your expenses and then store them for you on the cloud in addition your data is backed up in the cloud keeping receipts safe and accessible anytime the system also has a built-in receipt scanner and tracker so the QuickBooks self-employed app comes with built-in receipt scanning to help you track and organize your expenses so all you have to do here is to snap a photo of a receipt and quickbooks self-employed will attach it to the expense it matches so when it comes time to file taxes receipts are stored and ready to use now what if you just uh, you want to find a specific receipt let's say something happens and you just you know a client wants to be a client that's fighting you over um, over a situation over a problem and they want to confirm the amount of the receipt that you so you can search for scanned receipt 
So the system keeps your receipts organized in one place and makes them easily searchable. So after you scan receipts, you can use the search bar to find a particular receipt anytime. So if your client wants it or your accountant needs a specific receipt to help you with your taxes or expense reports, no problem. The system will basically get, get it for you. One thing that's also important is the fact that you have a way to find expenses through the system. And that's called in uh, QuickBooks Self-Employed, that's called Expense Survey. So survey reveals how self-employed workers approach expense tracking. So from tracking expenses to budgeting and preparing taxes, entrepreneurship can be just as challenging as, as it is tr thrilling, right? I'm sure you know it. I know it. I'm sure you know it. So QuickBooks Self-Employed has done a survey. What they've done is they've had, they have reached out to more than 1,000 self-employed people in the United States asking them about how they track their ex their business expenses, sort through stacks of receipts, and handle the strain of tax season. So the QuickBooks has used that sort of a survey to, to improve the system, to, to, to bring in new features, to allow people to constantly use the system to better their business, to optimize the, their fiscal uh, filing, and this kind of stuff. Now let's talk a little bit about the survey here. So one thing they realize is that 39% of self-employed workers say they keep physical receipts to track expenses. So collecting paper receipts is one thing that is it's really not working because antiquated though it may seem, most self-employed workers keep track of their expenses solely with paper receipts. You also have some common concerns with expense tracking. So. The concern, for example, is that uh, surprisingly, only 14% of self-employed workers track expenses with an app and over half, 55% that is, of workers don't even keep digital copies or, of receipts. Now, let, let's sort of understand why. People think it's too much work or the business is not big enough, their business is not big enough, or they don't have enough expenses. But think about it. Even if you don't have many expenses, Having oversight of money coming in and out helps you quickly understand how your business is doing. You don't have to have a calculator for it. You can just uh, look at the app and um, and see the results. And you might be saying, oh, my business is not big enough. Well, every business expense counts. Even, even if it's $1 or $10 or $1,000, it counts, especially if you're a freelancer. So saving your receipts for that new laptop ensures that you will not forget it at tax time and you might be saying it's too much work but if you track expenses online that's the easiest thing to do we also want to talk about the fact that you can use the app to separate business from personal expenses it's very tough to be your own expense managers i know that but only one third of self-employed workers have separate bank accounts for their business and personal expenses. So this can lead to crossover when it comes time to spending from uh, either account. So one thing you want to do is by having this app, you're able to to bring down exactly what's really happening at the right at the right time and at the right level. And one thing I also want to talk about here is that if you're able to use the app to uh, to track your your expenses, you're you are a step closer to budgeting for the unexpected. Owning a small business is already stressful. If you're a freelancer, we all know the uncertainties and, and everything can happen. But at this point, you want to be able to have a strategy, a tactic, a platform, an app that allows you to track your expenses fast, to to see at a glance, at a moment's notice, your uh, your profit and loss situation, whether you're making money or losing money, and make make the tweaks, the um, the tweaks that are important to boost your business in the long run. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous if you're to ask me. So I have spoken to you about sorting expenses and we've been having a lot of conversation around that. Now, I really want to talk to you. I've also talked to you about organizing receipts that's pretty good. Now, I want to talk to you about an important element here, and that important element is is uh, sending invoices. 
so you can send invoices on the go and you you know the moment your, your invoice is sent viewed and paid so you can effortlessly invoice customers from your smartphone you keep tabs on open new invoices and send overdue notices you can get paid faster by enabling online payments right so and this is kind of important because if you are a freelancer and uh and god forbid you are you happen to be lucky enough to have a growing base of uh, freelancing clients you don't want to do things manually because you might forget to uh, invoice clients so you want to have an idea of what's really happening in terms of sorting your expenses your operational expenses organizing receipts and uh, sending invoices to the uh, to the right to the right clients at the right time and this is exactly what you, you and you can do all of those things in quickbooks self-employed remember as i said earlier quickbooks self-employed there are six major features you can track mileage sort expenses organize receipts send invoices estimate taxes and file taxes now let's talk about estimating taxes this is a this is an interesting um this is an interesting section when it comes to the feature you have the estimate taxes you you have uh, the estimate taxes feature you have on quickbooks self-employed there are a few things that are worth talking about you can easily file and estimate your quarterly taxes we all know as a business owner as a freelancer as an independent contractor you gotta file your taxes quarterly otherwise you get pen you get penalized at the end of the year the irs is not even forgiving people about that so the the system the ai the ai powered app that quickbooks has through quickbooks self-employed will do the math for you so you can avoid year-end surprises so you know what you owe each quarter before taxes are due you can avoid late fees with automatic reminders of quarterly tax due dates you can easily organize income and expenses for instant tax filing and again folks everything is recorded on the cloud so no matter where you are it doesn't matter everything is tracked for you let's talk a little bit about about the the, the whole tax system within um, quickbooks self-employed so when you are self-employed paying taxes can be complicated we all know that so quickbooks is making making it very easy for you to understand everything you need to know about tax form so what are the tax forms you can first of all you can maximize tax deductions through the quickbooks self-employed tax feature so you can auto track as you go in other words you connect your bank credit cards so that your business expenses are automatically synced as you spend and not, not just synced but also categorized that's very important and that's where the smart organization comes into play because quickbooks ma makes it easy for you to sort expenses into the right tax categories or have them auto sorted in the background you can also store receipts with snap so you can snap photos of your receipts and quickbooks self-employed will automatically match them to your business expenses once you have that you also have easy quarterly taxes so that, so they've done the math for you that's pretty good now when taxes are done you can upgrade to the TurboTax bundle and instantly transfer your financial data so all you have to do you just have to connect to TurboTax as you know QuickBooks also own they, they also own the uh, TurboTax both QuickBooks and TurboTax are owned by the um, the Intuit company so you can uh, by, by connecting to TurboTax self-employed you can reduce manual entry you can easily transfer Schedule C income and expenses and you have one federal and one state tax return filing included isn't that beautiful another another thing that's very important is when it comes to tax season there are many tax forms that you have to be aware of so at the start of each year companies are required to send out tax forms to every everyone they paid throughout the previous years so this includes independent contractors and freelancers so as a self-employed person you then need to complete and submit various tax forms so here's a look at those tax forms i'm, I'm going to quickly go through them so you know so we have the 1099, the 1099 miss so like like most well most um self-employed workers you probably receive 1099s for your work with any business that pays you over six hundred dollars 
okay so if you earn less than six hundred dollars from a particular client you still need to report the income on your tax return but you will not receive a 1099 form this is the one of the one of the great areas where the irs is relying on the the good faith of citizens to self-report and then you have schedule se this is form 1040 so you can use schedule se on form 1040 to calculate the self-employment tax you owe Without an employer withholding Social Security and Medicare taxes from your paycheck, you need to calculate and pay those taxes yourself. So this is called a self-employment tax and Schedule SE on Form 1040 helps you calculate that. You also have Tax Form 1040. Everybody knows that. So use, ten, use Form 1040 to report your total annual income and deductions for the year, which will help you figure out how much income tax you owe. So payment for Form 1040 is, as we all know, due every year on April 15th. So some of your expenses as an independent contractor will go on the Form on the form 1040 instead of on your Schedule C. For instance, let's say uh, if you pay your own health insurance and you're not eligible for a spousal or employer-sponsored plan, you can claim that as an above-the-line deduction on your, on, your, on your 1040. We have uh, covered the, the 1040, the Form 1040 in other shows so you might want to double check our personal and business tax videos and then we, we also have form 1040 es so generally most independent contractors they have to submit taxes to the government every quarter so there are some specific regulations for that but generally you have to pay quarterly taxes if you expect to owe one thousand dollars or more in taxes for the year and this is roughly if you plan to make more than five thousand in uh, 1099 income so before you file quarterly quarterly taxes you want to use form 1040 es to estimate how much you will make during the year and how much you expect to pay on those earnings so the 1040 es form includes a payment voucher that you can send to the government with your estimated quarterly tax payment Finally, we have the form Schedule C. Schedule C A is a tax form filed with your personal tax return that helps you calculate the profit or loss from your business. So you can use it to tell the government how much you made, this is your earnings, how much you spent, this is your expenses, and if that resulted in a profit or loss. A Schedule C, easy, is just a simplified quote unquote easy version you can use the CEZ only if you meet certain requirements so the major requirements are that you only run one type of business and don't have more than five thousand in business expenses remember though you must include a schedule C or CEZ with your form 1040 during year end taxes you might also complete one when filing quarterly taxes with the 1040 ES this is for the unemployment uh, unemployment taxes Let's talk about estimated taxes. This is an important element for um, freelancers and independent contractors. And um, QuickBooks Self-Employed helps you a lot. So as a self-employed professional, you pay taxes to the government yourself, not through an employer. So you do this by paying quarterly taxes in amounts that you've estimated you will owe based on your income. I'll go a little deeper right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Cuba. We're also having a conversation here around um, taxes for the uh, for the self-employed and independent contractors, especially how they translate when you use QuickBooks Self-Employed. If you love the content's clarity and quality so far and would like to support us and become a member of our community, please turn on the notification bell and subscribe to this channel. And also, if you have questions, please ask them. We'll be more than happy to answer you. Our team re reviews all questions and we answer those that are pertinent, those that are relevant to the topic discussed. And also like this content, share, and we'll be very happy to have you around. So I was talking to you about taxes. Now, how do you file estimated taxes? You can do so by using Form 1040 ES to estimate how much you will make during the year and how much tax you will expect to pay on those earnings. Then pay a portion of that each quarter by filling out the form, the, the voucher rather, form um, on form 1040 ES. So you should complete a 1040 ES each quarter because your estimated income for the year might change over the course of three months. 
depending on how much you work. There is also something called a safe harbor rule. So if you expect, for instance, to make more than more this year than you did last year, the government only requires you to pay at least 100% of what you paid last year. One ten percent if you make more than one fifty thousand. So you'll still have to pay the full amount of what you owe at the end of the year. But this basically gives you an interest-free loan until the end of the year. Is there a penalty for miscalculating or not paying estimated taxes? You bet. You bet. You will typically pay a fine or a penalty that can be as much as ten percent for a federal and ten percent for your state. So if you owed say. $5,000 in federal taxes and $1,000 in state taxes and didn't pay throughout the year, you could owe up to $600 in additional fines and penalties. So depending on how much you pay during the year, you might over or underpay. So if you overpay on quarterly taxes, you get a refund at the end of the year. If you, if you underpay on quarterly taxes, you pay the difference at the end of the year plus penalties and interest. So remember that. You only owe taxes on your business profit, which is business earnings minus business expenses. So you always make sure you are keeping good track of this too, the expenses and the earnings, so you don't lose money to taxes you, you can't get back. What are the estimated taxes due dates? So quarter one, which covers January 1st through March 31st, is to due on April 15th. Quarter two, which covers April 1st through May 31st is due on June 17th. Quarter three, which covers June 1st through August 31st is due on September 16th. Quarter four, which covers September 1st through December 31st, the estimated taxes are due January 15th. One thing you have to understand is that QuickBooks Self-Employed calculates your, ta your quarterly taxes estimates for you, so you don't have to do anything. I mean, the, the, because, because the software tracks and organizes all of your income and expenses throughout the year, it also calculates automatically your quarterly estimated taxes for you. So e you can easily see your estimated payments for each quarter and their respective due dates. Besides, you can keep track of the tax payments you've already made to, to stay organized, really, if you think about it, for filing your annual tax return. So one thing you have to do is to make an estimated tax payment, it's easy to fill out the, the payment voucher for Form 1040ES directly inside QuickBooks Self-Employed. Then all you have to do again is print and pay by mail, or you can even pay online with a tax bundle. One thing that one thing you also want to pay attention to is, and I will talk about that, and this is the self-employment tax. This is an important element that we need to talk about. So what is self-employment tax? Part of every American's income goes towards supporting Social Security and Medicare. This is called a FICA tax if you are for if you're an employee or a SICA tax if you're self-employed. When you are an employee, your FICA tax is about 7.5% and your employer pays another 7.5% for you. When you are self-employed, you pay the full 15%, actually it's 15.3% yourself, which is why it's nicknamed the self-employment tax. How do you file estimated taxes? So the self-employment tax is calculated on a schedule SE. SE stands for self-employment, I already said that. So after you figure out your net profit on a schedule C, your earnings minus your expenses, then you calculate how much of that is subject to the self-employment tax. All of these calculations are built into the forms that you file as part of your federal tax return. The social security tax is 12.4% of your self-employment earnings and this is up to $118,500. So any amount you make as a self-employed individual over that amount is exempt from this tax. And then you have the Medicare tax. This is 2.9% of your self-employment earnings. So Medicare tax is applied to all of your earnings. Now, to ease the burden of on self-employed individuals, the federal government allows you to calculate your net earnings, reducing your taxable income by 7.65%. Now, let's give you an example that um, sort of illustrate how you calculate self-employment self tax. So fund revenue. In this scenario, you your self-employed business revenue earnings is 50000 And then you calculate net earnings. So multiply your earnings by 0 0.9235 as you only need to pay taxes on 
3.35% of your self-employed revenue. This results in $46,175, your net earnings. You need to determine taxes owed. You need to find 15.3% of $46,174, which, which, uh, which comes out to $7,064.62. We're putting this on the screen for you guys. So this is a $7,064.62 for the Social Security and Medicare taxes you owe your self-employment tax. Fill out Form 1040. So you list the the this entire self-employment tax amount on the on the 1040 form under other taxes and you report adjustments so you divide your self-employment tax in half which comes out to three thousand five hundred and thirty two dollars and thirty one cents so you report this amount as an adjustment to income on your form 1040. the good thing is that with um with QuickBooks Self-Employed, you can automate self-employment ta task ca calculations. So the system tracks your income and expenses throughout the year so that it automatically calculates the, the amount of self-employment tax you owe. It's the same thing as mileage tracking. So the self-employment tax is part of the estimated tax payment you make quarterly using the payment voucher on Form 1040ES. So you can fill out the payment voucher directly inside QuickBooks Self-Employed. You can print it and you can mail it with your payment or you can file online with the tax bundle. Let's talk finally about Schedule C. This is another important element that people need to know about. And Schedule C is pretty interesting. Self-employed workers and sole proprietors use Schedule C to report profits or loss from their business. It, it, it details it, so this Schedule C details all deductible self-employed expenses. So by subtracting expenses from your gross annual income or total wages and revenue, you can calculate the net profit or net loss for a given tax period. All you got to do is to fill out Schedule C on Form 1040 or CEZ before the April 15 deadline. The first part of the Schedule C is where you report your earnings. So you will notice some fields like returns and cost of goods sold. These are only applicable when you are selling a physical product. So you want you can, you can really go ahead and, and ignore them if you are a service or on-demand worker. The second part of Schedule C is where you will record any expenses related to your business. The Internal Revenue Service allows tax deduction for most business-related related expenses. What are the self-employed tax deductions? So according to the IRS, those who are self-employed can deduct ordinary and necessary again ordinary and necessary expenses and ordinary expenses is common and accepted in your trade or business in other words if the if the government looks at tax returns filed by other people working in your industry they should see the same the same uh, type of expenses so a necessary expense is helpful and appropriate for your job so let me repeat that ordinary expense and necessary it must be Ordinary and necessary. Ordinary expenses are those that are common and accepted in your trade or business. Necessary expenses are those that are helpful and appropriate for your job. So to be considered deductible, the expense must meet both standards. Let me give you a few tax, tax deduction examples. So you have auto expenses. So auto expenses are tax deductible for ordinary and necessary business use. So you can keep track of the mileage and expenses, things like maintenance, repairs, and you can categorize them based on business or personal use. The internet. So if you use the internet for your business, you can deduct your monthly internet expenses up to the percentage that is business related. Utility bills, same thing. If you work from home, for instance, part of your, your utility bills are deductibles. They are deductible. So the amount you can deduct, however, though, is calculated based on the percentage of your home that is used for a business. So the business use of your home is deductible and uh, aptly known as the home office deduction. You also have marketing expenses. You can deduct them. Any legitimate marketing you do is a deductible business expense. This includes everything from pay-per-click advertising and website promotion to video production and business cards. You have um, office supplies, so you can deduct 
office supplies, legal and accounting expenses, the cost of running your business, the cost of hiring freelancers and contractors, computers and other equipment, professional licenses, association dues, periodical subscriptions, rent, cost of repairs and upgrades, and so on and so forth. So any money you spend to run your business is generally deductible. What about meals? You can deduct 50% of the business related meals and entertainment expenses. This can be meals you have as part of business travel or those you pay for as part of business uh, as part of a business meeting. Self-employment tax, although self-employed individuals must pay the self-employment tax, the Internal Revenue Service allows you to deduct half of it for tax purposes. So folks, this is a non-exhaustive list of uh, of um, expenses that are considered by the IRS ordinary and necessary. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still having a conversation here around um, QuickBooks, self-employed, and um, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm just telling you some of the benefits I'm, I'm walking you through the system and if you are self-employed one of the one of the features that the the, um, the system has is that it allows you to to calculate your taxes there is inherent in the platform a tax calculator so if you let's say you are a self-employed independent contractor or freelancer and you receive a 1099 miss form for from a company that hired you for a project or you have a side gig that enables you to earn extra money, you may be required to pay taxes on your business income. So you can use QuickBooks self-employment tax calculator to figure out what taxes you owe. And you can either use, you can either access the, um, you can either access the, the tool on the internet or on your app. One thing I, I want to mention before we close and we are nearly at the end of today's conversation is that you have to remember the takeaway here is that QuickBooks Self-Employed is for independent contractors and freelancers. And with the with this tool, with the software program, you can do six things, six key things. You can track mileage. You can sort expenses. You can organize receipts. You can send invoices. You can estimate taxes and you can file taxes. And the thing here is that you can do all of these things on the go. You don't have to carry any paperwork, any any manual. There's nothing you have to do manually. You can actually do everything digitally. And your data is um, it's really on the go because it allows you to do to focus on what really matters, which is your business and leave the, the back office work, the accounting, the track, the tracking work to the system, to the tool, to the AI, AI powered tools that, key, uh, that QuickBooks has. And at the end of the year, if you need to transfer the data to your accountant or to your tax um, lawyer or to anybody else or to your um, CPA, whomever you deal with on a, um, on a consulting basis, you, this is very easy because all the info is on the internet is is on is on um, is online. So you can just transfer this the files in a digital manner to your um, to experts working with you very easily. So that's really the the takeaway of the of today's conversation. I will see you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>